The first thing we learned today was a method for differentiating polynomials and indeed for differentiating any function of the form x to some power. So let's say I have a function that looks like x to the 15th. The rule for finding the derivative is that the power 15 becomes a coefficient and then the power that's left over is one less than it used to be. So the 15 comes down as a coefficient and the power becomes 14. This is very useful for differentiating polynomials. For instance, what if I have 10x to the 7th minus 15x squared plus x to the 99 minus 17? Well, to differentiate, I bring down the 7 and I subtract 1. So my power of x becomes 6 and 7 times 10 is 70. Now I bring down that 2, 15 times 2 is 30, and I drop my power by 1 and I'm left with x. Again, I bring down this 99 and I drop my power by 1 and get 98. 17 is a constant, so its derivative is 0, but also I can think that 17 is the same as 17 times x to the 0. So when I differentiate it, I bring down the 0 and I subtract 1, but this times 0 means the whole thing is just going to be 0. We didn't prove it, but this rule of bringing down the, the power and subtracting by 1 is going to work for any power as long as it makes sense. Now if I have a negative number to a fractional power, I might end up getting something like the square root of negative 2, which of course doesn't make any sense. But let's say I have something that does make sense. Let's say I have something like x to the 1 3rd plus 7x to the minus 1 minus 3x to the minus pi. If I want to differentiate this function, I do the same thing. So for x to the 1 3rd, I bring down the 1 3rd and I subtract by 1. 1 3rd minus 1 is minus 2 thirds. For this 7x to the minus 1, I bring down that minus 1. So my plus 7 becomes a minus 7. And now I subtract 1 from the power. Minus 1 minus 1 is minus 2. Finally, for this minus 3x to the minus pi, I bring down the minus pi. Minus 3 times minus pi is plus 3 pi. And my power, I just subtract by 1. So my power is minus pi minus 1. We also talked about the derivatives of exponential functions. Now exponential functions usually look like this. This is true when my base is a number greater than 1. It's mirrored if it's a number less than 1, and it's a flat line if it's 1 to the x because 1 to any power is 1. Let's think about the, the derivative of this. The derivative of a to the x is the limit as h goes to 0 of my function when I plug in x plus h minus my function when I plug in x over h and I can simplify this nicely. I can pull out an a to the x. So now what I have is my original function times some limit that doesn't have an x in it. And so this limit is just going to be some constant number depending on h. Now if a is greater than 3, this limit is going to be greater than 1. If a is less than 2, this limit is going to be less than 1. So we can imagine there's some number between 2 and 3 where this limit is precisely 1. And that's the number we define to be e. And if we define that number to be e, then in general, this limit here is equal to the natural log, which is the log base e, of a. So in general, the derivative of a to the x is a to the x times the natural log of a. For example, suppose my function is 3 to the x over 17 x squared. For my derivative, I can use the quotient rule. So this is the bottom function 
times the derivative of the top function. The derivative of 3 to the x is 3 to the x natural log of 3. So that's the bottom times the derivative of the top. Now minus the top function, 3 to the x, times the derivative of the bottom function. Now this is a product rule. So I bring down that 2. 17 times 2 is 34. And 2 minus 1 is 1, so the power on x is 1. Remember, we're doing the quotient rule. So on the bottom, we have to take the bottom function squared. Now this isn't simplified, but this is good enough for our purposes. What if instead my function was e to the x times 14x minus 2x to the power 50? Now I would have to use the product rule because here's the first function multiplied to the second function. Remember for the product rule I take the first function times the derivative of the second function. 14x is a line, its derivative is 14. To differentiate 2 times x to the 50th, I bring down the 50. 2 times 50 is 100. 50 minus 1 is 49, so I get 100x to the 49th. So this is the first function times the derivative of the second function. Now I add the second function times the derivative of the first function. So here's the second function, and the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. e is the one number where e to the x is its own derivative. If I wanted to be careful, or if I wanted to use the rule very precisely, I could say the derivative of e to the x is e to the x times the natural log of e, because this is the pattern for any number to the x. But the natural log of e is just 1. And in general, we don't expect you to do the middle step. You can just remember that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And the derivative of any other number a to the x is a to the x times the natural log of a.